guys, Kylo here. If you're new around here, this is a part two. There's a part one if you want to go back and check it out. This is a follow up to that one. So here we go. I designed these swing arms out of aluminum and Delrin. And I wanted a, a two part uh, easily exchangeable swing arm option. The idea here is I wanted to try out some different swing arms. And in order to do that, I, you know, having to weld them each time would just be a hassle. So this is kind of a, a quick disconnect, if you will, where I can easily make a new set of swing arms if uh, I want to toy with it, which is what I ended up doing. I made the two end caps together as one, and then when I'm done, I'll saw them in half and have two individual pieces made back to back. I got some footage here from when I did the Delrin. Uh, I ended up making a thicker piece out of some Delrin, and uh, you'll see that later in the video. I don't think a prop spacer was absolutely necessary for my build, but it gave me a little more clearance, and it was just something to do while I was waiting on parts in the mail. I manually laid out the bolt hole pattern, always wanted to do one manually like that. I had to prioritize some things that needed to be done. For example, I wanted to make sure I had all the welding complete before I attempted any epoxy, because the welding would destroy the epoxy. I got quite the graveyard growing of swing arms. I finally decided that I needed to cut longer pieces so that I could get the proper bends and geometry for the hang points and it was all just sort of trial and error. My plan is to use these steel arms during the uh, initial testing phase and once I get that all lined out I'm going to make a pair out of titanium. This was my original swing arm and this is the final version. Also incorporated an offset to counter the motor torque as well. This is a little trick that I do just to uh, measure the distance you want the hole, set up the mill to drill at the right uh, radius and uh, just do a peck mark and then see if your peck mark lines up on the hole. If it's there like that, you're good. Proceed. This is all the hardware that I'm going to be using to mount these swing arms. Now, when it's all said and done, I'm going to come back and make a pair out of titanium just to save a little weight, make it look a little more bling blingish I guess but uh, this is this is the swing arm assembly I'm fixing to do my initial hang checks with the final versions it turns out that the uh, hang point fulcrum there at the top of those swing arms is above the thrust line here you can clearly see it so I take the soft parts off and that puts it a lot closer so I'm going to take this design right here and I'm going to go on with testing on it Booyah. I got some of these crazy strong rare earth magnets. You can see they pull in tight even on both sides of my fat hand. And uh, I'm gonna hide one inside of the up tube on the uh, paramotor. And I've got to use this nail here so that I can, I can get it in the right place. I bet y'all thought I was gonna use the lathe, huh? Psych. Uh, this is some of that epoxy putty, that quick steel, or it goes by different names. And I'm uh, just going to tamp the magnet down in there in the correct place. And stick it on. I guess I should mention that the ring magnet you see stuck there is going to be inside the pull start handle. I decided that I'm going to epoxy the inside of the fuel tank. Uh, this is an abrasive, it's a silicon carbide. And I had it in the shop, so I just had an idea. I thought I would dump it in there, shake it around a little bit, seal it up so it don't all spill out, and, and just do the truffle shuffle until it sanded it. Didn't take very long till I decided I needed a different idea. So, what I ended up doing is taking the hoop off and building a little jig to go on the back of the trailer. And I'm gonna use some gasoline to get this job done. I, I, I jig it up and I just drive around every bumpy road that I can find and there are a lot around here to choose from. So I just spent like a few hours driving around jamming some cloud-based mayhem podcast and sanding the inside of my fuel tank. <laughs>
While I was out, I went to the local hardware store. I was out of short drywall, drywall, blah, 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 drywall screws, so I figured I would re-up my stash and put them in the tank to uh, really get it roughed up inside there so the epoxy would stick well. I wanted to incorporate some instrumentation onto my throttle, so I made it big enough to put a uh, thermometer, a cylinder head temperature thermometer, and uh, RPM tachometer on there as well as a kill switch and a couple of extra switches for some lighting if I want to put that on in the future or a smoke system or whatever. I used this uh, leftover tube from the uh, fuel gauge sight window that I built and those are going to be spacers for the throttle. The ends of the throttle cable uh, needed some hardware, so I made the hardware that goes on the end of it. This is the end that goes under the lever on your hand, and then I made another piece that goes on the other end by the carburetor. I don't know what you call it, a thingamajigger? But I carved it out of this bolt right here. Chucked it up on the lathe, drilled out the hole for the cable, and uh, just made it happen. Check it out. I changed my design slightly with the throttle. You can see here I've drawn it straight, but I ended up putting a curve in it just to give it a little more tactile feel. And I used the mill to carve out the bulk of it and then finished it up on the old belt grinder. I know, I know, you can get cable clamps for like a dollar for a 10 pack, but I had a brass rod, so I made a pair. The cruise control, or the throttle lock, it also was made by a piece of scrap I had laying around the shop. So there, had that. I used some high strength epoxy to put the switches and the conduit connections on and then soldered in all the wires. I used a bit of electrical heat shrink, you know, shoved all my wires through it and paid a little tug of war to get them all through there and then heat it up and it'll shrink tight around all the wires to keep it in one solid bundle and riveted it together. I think I set a personal best as far as the biggest thing I ever clamped up into the mill. And uh, of course the protractor sure does come in handy when you need to measure some angles. And uh, I milled out some slots so that I could better fit this to the machine. It all worked out perfectly. Check for final clearances and strength. Everything is A-OK. -okay. I'm happy. I'm going to slick up the swing arm attachments with some epoxy, so I needed to paint all the hardware with a mold release agent and let that dry overnight. While it was drying, I went ahead and figured out where I was going to put the uh, pull start pulley. So I drilled a hole there, mounted that sucker up, and got ready for some epoxy. Part A, Part B. Let it cure for a day or two, and then when you pop it off, that mold release just pops off. You end up with a smooth, mirrored image of your part. So it'll turn freely and be supported at the edges. I decided that in addition to the manual abrasives that I had used on the inside of the fuel tank, I wanted to do a chemical etch as well. So I used sodium hydroxide. It's well known to uh, react with aluminum, and after just a few seconds, you can see 
it, it starts bubbling and chewing up that metal and gives it a good surface for that epoxy to bind to. I used a little dab of silicone to seal up the uh, fuel sight gauge so that it didn't leak chemicals. And also it has to be just right on the temperature. If it's too hot or too cold, your epoxy does not work right. And, uh, there, you can run into problems. So I made sure I had optimal temperature in the environment and that it was stable for 24 hours before I did this. The number one reason for a failed epoxy adhesion is a, a poor mix. So I made sure that I mixed this stuff very, very well. And again, the truffle shuffle to spread it around and get it in all the nooks, crannies, cracks, and crevices. And once you're sure you have a 100% coating on the inside, you pour off the excess and let it drain. And uh, this was timed and rehearsed. I made sure that everything was in place so I didn't have to shuffle around. And then you also want to blow out the, uh, the sight hose with air so that it don't stop up with epoxy. This is the epoxy I coated the tank with. It's, uh, you know, against this, it's hard as a rock. This is just what was stuck to the side. It's like a film. It almost feels like a rubber bladdery kind of stuff. Supposedly impervious to all fuels permanently. Uh, so the entire tank is coated with this stuff. Probably added a little bit of weight. I'm going to uh, weigh the machine to figure out just how much it added. But I feel like it was a good addition and will provide uh, safety against leaks. And uh, actual some structural rigidity as well in the event of a uh, mishap. I think it'll be a, a good protection for me as a pilot. Once again, the math skills came in handy to figure out just how many holes to drill in this hoop and how far to space them, and then of course a double count. Can't take the pharmacist out of me that easy. And of course, drill them out. I wanted to take a little pride in my machine since I spent so much time and effort on it, so I've decided that I would polish that aluminum to a high mirrored shine. And it only took a couple of evenings, a little elbow grease as they say. In no way was I going for perfection, but I was quite happy with the results. It looks really good, I think. I used aluminum rivets to attach the net and then I used a piece of higher strength Dyneema line to run through the inside. And uh, I used a, a trucker's hitch knot. I believe that's what it's called. You can get it really, really tight and it pulls on itself. And it's kind of like a, the original ratchet strap. I wanted to keep the fuel delivery as simple as possible. I found this brass one-way valve mesh fuel pickup filter. Uh, at, a, at a parts warehouse online and then I made this part to pass the tube through the tank and I can also access this filter if I need to in the future. It also doubles as a safety mechanism. I can reach back over my head, pull it up out of the fuel and kill the engine if for some reason other means of killing it don't work. Also to save weight and add to the simplicity, I chose to just do a simple blow tube slash vent of a primer bulb. So this is as it sits in my shop. I don't have any fuel in it yet. As soon as I put fuel in it, I'll be ready to do the initial cranking, initial hang phase, and then on to flight testing. That will be in the next video. Okay, for the contest rules. In the last video, Dirty Bird Part 1, I made mention in the description, if you can guess the empty weight to the Dirty Bird before I put fuel in it, you're gonna win this smartwatch. I'm gonna send it to whoever guesses it the closest. Please convert it to pounds. I don't wanna do a bunch of math. I do math all day anyway. But uh, this smartwatch that Lawn Chair Aviator sent me to test out, we said I could have a giveaway and I thought this would be the perfect time to do it. So guess how much my machine weighs, empty weight, as it is right now, and uh, you can win that smartwatch. I'll send it to you. And uh, if you like the video, 
You know what to do. Much love, y'all. Kyle out.